Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Rafat. This is Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for the seven step system to pass the 12 YBT. And you just completed my integrated writing task number four. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the essay and make some corrections and some refocusing or reorganizing and then give you a score. Now, again, uh, because I'm paying so much attention to your essay and I'm looking at looking at it in such a detailed manner the TOEFL would never look at it in this type of detail so my scores sometimes have a tendency to be a little bit lower than what you would actually score in the TOEFL IBT now I would say your first this introduction here this part I think it's just you have too much information here I think you can probably shorten this a little bit we know that the reading passage is explaining some basic facts about the river and we know that the lecture is talking about how the river was actually formed right that's the main the main idea that you want to get out of this so you're not really saying that in the introduction so I'm going to get rid of this. The reading passage. I would just say explains some important facts about the Mississippi River. And then say the lecture supports this information by discussing this is very important here that the fact that you didn't put that in kind of worries me a little bit because that's exactly what the lecture did in this case I threw a curveball at you I didn't really give you a reading passage which contradicts the information in the lecture does not contradict the information but it talks about how the river was formed so you might say here according to the reading passage you might say the Mississippi River is the largest river in North America and the maybe something like this according to the reading passage the Mississippi Mississippi River is the largest river in North America and the fourth longest river in the world probably don't need to say this it does talk about the origin I think you probably want to say that say originated in Lake Lake Itasca Minnesota I would probably say having originated in Lake Atosca, Minnesota the
the Mississippi River moves from a north in a southerly direction and then say I think what you want to say and with its major tributary the Missouri River you didn't really say this but you want to put this in there and its major tributary You said that in the second paragraph, right? So I, I think, where is it where you talked about um, it serves and drains all 31 states? So we'll take this. probably something like that serves and drains 31 US states and you might say something like even serving as boundaries for 10 states and then you have uh, what else we have here? Oh yeah, it talks about the flooding thing. So you have that. This river is also, you might say, known. I would say for great flooding events in the 20th century. Now in this case you're using you're trying to use what's called a a sequencing organizational pattern which means you discuss the reading passage then you discuss the lecture. You discuss the reading passage in the lecture. Well that works if you have what's called a contradictory type organization where there's three points there's three points in the reading passage and the lecture presents three counterpoints to all those points so it makes more sense to organize it using it that way if that is indeed what's happening in the reading and the lecture now in this case there's not really any counterpoints to what was said in the reading passage so it's probably better to present the information in the listening in a separate paragraph which means you're comparing and contrasting the information in the reading with the information in the lecture but you're using more of a chunking organization to do that so we get rid of that idea and let's put this down here so we have in this case, let's go back to what we're doing here. Almost lost my train of thought here. Hold on. It says uh, they're at the pool. According to the reading passage, the, Mis the Mississippi River is the largest river in North America and the fourth longest river in the world. Having originated in Lake Itasca, Minnesota, The Mississippi River moves in a southerly direction with its tributary, the Missouri River, and then maybe put a comma in here, and serves and drains 31 U.S. states, even serving as boundaries for 10 states. This river is also known for great flooding events in the 20th century. So I think we can get rid of this one. I think now we're ready to get into the lecture. I think we've covered 
then you might say the lecture adds to the information in the reading passage by focusing on how Mississippi River was formed. That's I think that's key here. Now I think you're getting you're getting to that here. That's the purpose of this information. So you want to add this, say, the upper part of the river, and you've kind of said this, was formed you would say was formed during the Wisconsin glacial period. I think it used the word glaciation period. which started say 75,000 years ago and ended about 12,000 years ago. Now I think here supplements we've already said that Now obviously our earth is a lot warmer than it is or than it was then so at some point all of these huge glaciers melted right and that's I think part of the lecture is using kind of what's called a cause effect relationship the cause are all of these huge glaciers and then once the glaciers started to melt then we have specific effects and how it shaped what we now know is the Mississippi River so then you would say as the climate warmed these ice sheets melted and you said this I'm going to say releasing tremendous and it says amounts and you said flow that's good I like that so you're using some synonyms instead of repeating. So as the climate warmed, these ice sheets melted, releasing a tremendous flow of water and then you have this idea what's called uh, was diminished and the Mississippi River remained but I think it it kind of got rid of the lakes, right? Okay, let's see what. So I think what you want to say is, as the climate warmed, these ice sheets melted, releasing a tremendous flow of water. Then you'll say most of the 
lakes gradually disappeared so most of these lakes disappeared and then the Mississippi River Remain. That's exactly right. That's kind of what it says according to the lecture. Okay, so let's take a look at it now and see what we have. The lecture adds to the information in the reading passage by focusing on how the Mississippi River was formed. The upper part of the river was formed during the Wisconsin glaciation period, which started 75,000 years ago and ended about 12,000 years ago. As the climate warmed, these ice sheets melted, releasing a tremendous flow of water. Most of the lakes that were formed to collect this water gradually disappeared and the Mississippi River remained. And then we get into the dams. But the main thing is, is we want to focus more on the formation of the river. That seems to be, I think, the big part of what we're seeing here. I'm not sure that that's that important there, but we've probably said enough information here. So, releasing a tremendous full water, most of the lakes that were formed to collect this water eventually disappeared and the Mississippi River remained. You might say, and it, where does it talk about the dams? So dams are spread in its tributaries serving field lands by making a natural river lake. So in the lecture it says, at each point where major tributaries join the Mississippi River, natural sediment dams eventually built up to pond the upstream portion of the river forming a natural river lake. The largest is Lake Pip Pippin which at one time extended all the way to St. Paul. So I don't know that that information is, is that important in terms of the formation of, of the river, so I don't think you really need that. from the reading passage and the lecture one can more about the facts and the formation of a You might say a 2,320 mile long river that that was formed in North America many thousands of years ago. Okay, I think we got it. So uh, I'm, I'm just giving you a four paragraph uh, essay here. I chose to use a chunking sequencing organization as opposed to using the sequencing 
because in this case the information in the lecture did not present three counterpoints to the points made in the reading passage. Now if it had it would have been better for you to organize each paragraph discussing the reading and the lecture in the same paragraph. That would have been a much better way to organize the ideas. So because it didn't do that, I spent time in the second paragraph discussing the reading passage and then in the third paragraph I discussed the lecture and then in the final paragraph I talked about a conclusion and kind of connected the two sources together. Okay, let's read it one more time. It says, in this set of materials, the reading passage explains some important facts about the Mississippi River, and the lecture supports this information by discussing how the river was formed. According to the reading passage, the Mississippi River is the largest river in North America and the fourth longest river in the world. Having originated in Lake Itasca, Minnesota, the Mississippi River moves in a southerly direction and with its tributary, the Missouri River, just put serves here, serves and drains 31 U.S. states, even serving as boundaries for 10 states. The river is also known for great flooding events in the 20th century. Now if you want to get a little bit more, you could mention here, according to the reading, that uh, in response to the flooding, they built hundreds of miles of levees to prevent future floods, which unfortunately don't always work. You could put that if you wanted to. You would put it directly after that. Okay, third paragraph. The lecture adds to the information in the reading passage by focusing on how the Mississippi River was formed. The upper part of the river was formed during the Wisconsin glaciation period, which started 75,000 years ago and ended about 12,000 years ago. As the climate warmed, these ice sheets melted, releasing a tremendous flow of water. Most of the lakes that were formed to collect this water gradually disappeared, and the Mississippi River remained. In conclusion, from the reading passage in the lecture, one can learn more about the facts and the formation should say of, of a 2,320 mile long river that was formed in North America many thousands of years ago. Alright, so your next question is how would you score here? Uh, I'm going to put you probably, I, I don't think it's a bad essay here. Let me click on the rubrics here really quickly. Now, I don't have my screen where I don't think it's going to work exactly the way that it should but let me go ahead and click on on some things here really quick under the writing and see if I can figure out how I would score your essay and why. Okay so integrated writing rubric Let's see what we have Okay, let's put it over here where you can see it. I don't know, maybe yours might get in the three range. It says um, the two range. Even though your response contains some relevant information from the lecture, you have significant difficulties with language or you have left out important ideas from the lecture. Also, you have not demonstrated an understanding of how the information in the lecture is connected. Yes! I hate to do it, but you didn't really make that connection, the formation idea. That needs to be in the introduction. So because you didn't really make that connection, I think that'll pull your essay out of the three range. And I'm going to put you at about 2.50 out of four, I mean out of five, or 17 points out of 30. So you do have some language errors in there, but I don't think that's the biggest the biggest issue here is making the required connections and then being able to coherently and accurately explain those connections. So you can see the changes that I made here. So again, you're right around 17 points out of 30 on this particular essay for the reasons that I just said in this video.